Hi, my name is Kirk Davis, and I'm a Specialist Solutions Architect on the Microsoft Platform Team at AWS. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to very easily use Amazon Code Catalyst to set up a build, test, and deployment workflow for a serverless ASP.NET Core application built on .NET 6. So Amazon Code Catalyst is a cloud-based collaboration space for software development teams. Code Catalyst has a lot of features for dev teams, including creating CI CD workflows to automatically build and deploy software to AWS, which is what I'm going to be showing today. You can also create projects with multiple source repositories. You can work on your code with remote development environments, and you can set up tests with auto generated reports, track issues for your projects, and more. So, to get you started quickly, Code Catalyst includes a library of blueprints. Each blueprint includes a source repository with application code, a CI CD workflow, issue tracking, and more. Um, if you don't want to use a blueprint, of course, you can start from scratch, uh, or you can link to an existing GitHub repo and start from there. For this video, I'll be using a serverless.NET blueprint that AWS, sorry, that uses AWS Lambda to run the application code. Uh, if you want to deploy an ASP.NET Core application to AWS Elastic Beanstalk, or as a container to Amazon ECS, or to AWS App Runner instead, there's another blueprint for that. So the .NET serverless application blueprint includes everything that's required to deploy an ASP.NET Core uh, web, web API application to an AWS Lambda function with an Amazon API Gateway API in front. API Gateway converts the incoming HTTP requests from a user or from a browser into the JSON format that Lambda functions expect. And then the Gateway converts the JSON response back into an HTTP response before sending it back to the caller. And basically this lets you host a web application in a Lambda function. The blueprint also creates a source repository in Code Catalyst, as well as a workflow that handles the CI CD process. So now I'm gonna switch over to a browser and we'll actually um, get going, get started. Um, keep in mind that I've already set up Code Catalyst. Uh, it's free to set up uh, and to create. Uh, you use an um, Amazon Builder ID to sign in. I've already done that. And when I set it up, I linked it to my AWS account. These steps are part of the initial setup of Code Catalyst and they're covered in the docs. So with that, I'm going to uh, create a new project. So let's click Create Project. And you can see I had some existing projects in there. Um, and I'm going to pick the .NET Serverless Application Blueprint. You'll notice that when I selected the blueprint um, on the right hand pane over here, which you can actually drag out to expand, it shows you some details about the uh, blueprint that you picked. Um, there's an architecture review. It shows you the permissions and some details about the actual resources uh, that it's going to create. Um, so I'm going to click next. And I'm going to give this uh, project a name and I'm going to call it the Whoops, let's call it serverless ASP net demo. And I'm actually going to like copy that because I'm going to use that name for some things down below. The AWS account connection, you pick which account you use when you uh, first linked it to your AWS account. So I'll use the existing connection there. You also pick a deployment role. This is, again, something that you configure when you set up Code Catalyst. I'll pick the one that says Code Catalyst Preview. That's because when I set this up, Code Catalyst was still in preview. So the one that you pick will probably not have the word preview in it. Um, and then under the project type, I'm not going to pick empty C sharp. That's pretty boring. I'm going to pick ASP.NET Core C sharp. Um, I could also pick like minimal APIs or the new Lambda annotations framework for, that AWS uh, has put out for use with Lambda functions. But just to keep it really straight and vanilla, um, straightforward and vanilla, I'm going to use uh, just the ASP.NET Core project. Um, this is the default name that Code Catalyst, this blueprint gives to your repository and the project. I like having the same name for everything, so I'm going to paste in the name I used up above serverless ASP.NET demo, serverless ASP.NET demo. Um, for the cloud formation stack, don't worry about it if you don't know what that is. Um, it's our infrastructure as code service. 
um, and I will deploy to the AWS, uh, sorry, to the US West 2 region, which is in Oregon. And then I'm going to create the project. And it takes a few seconds to create. And then when it's done, um, you, I'm going to go ahead. It, now, when it created this, it created the source repository that it put all of the files into, including the application source code files. That actually kicks off a workflow, which is a CI CD process. So that's actually happening in the background. But let's go look at the code first. Um, I will click down here and go to source repositories. You can also collapse this left hand menu. It gives you a little bit more space. Here's the Git repo that it created. You can see that it's the name that I picked. If I come into here, there's a web based file viewer and editor. You can actually make edits right here and commit your changes, although obviously don't recommend that. You could you could also, of course, uh, clone this repository down to your local work environment or your workstation. You could also create one of those remote dev environments I talked about where I could edit the code using Visual Studio Code or another IDE um, where I don't have to clone the code locally. I would be editing the remote files. Um, the only things I really wanted to show you in here are one in the source folder is the actual ASP.NET Core project. There's the controller with the values controller uh, in the controllers folder. There's also this serverless.template file. Uh, this is a YAML file. Um, if I open this up, this is a YAML file that defines the uh, the resources that are going to be created, which is mainly just the API gateway um, and the Lambda function itself. Um, with that, let's go look. Uh, one more thing actually was up in the code catalyst, in the dot code catalyst folder, there are the, the actual workflows. These are the CI CD workflows that are going to be uh, that we've got predefined that came with a template or the blueprint. The main one is main.yaml. Um, you can see it's pretty straightforward. It's just a bunch of uh, YAML text that uh, gives it commands to, you know, do the build, .NET build, and run the tests, um, and then finally do the deployment. Let's look at that in the visual view. So if we come over here to CI CD and go to workflows, you can see that the those two workflows, the pull request and the main, are here also. The pull request is a an example workflow that comes with the blueprint for when someone does a pull request. Uh, we're going to look at the main workflow, which is the one we're using today. You can see that a run has already been kicked off. If I go to look at the workflow itself, um, I could come down here. You can actually uh, zoom to fit. So now you can see there's really only three steps here. This is a very simple workflow. You can edit this, of course, and extend it. You could add additional steps. You could do things in parallel. There's a lot you can do with this. Uh, there's a source step. There's the build and test step where it actually does a .NET build and then um, runs the unit tests and generates a report. And then finally, the AWS step. If I want to go look at the current executing run or the, the, the current run that's executing, if I click on this run, it'll show me the workflow instance sort of that's currently running. And again, if I come in here, I will zoom to fit um, and I can go look at the steps that it executed. Um, I'm, you can also expand this uh, side window a bit. If I come down here, I can make this wider so I can see more. So if I go into the uh, the steps, you can see that it ran .NET test. If I go to the reports, I can actually click on that report. There's only like a couple or one actually unit test that ran. It's more there to show you how to do a unit test um, in Code Catalyst and how to view the report. So I'm going to go back to that currently executing uh, run again, and we'll see that that the deployment is already happening or possibly. It might be almost finished. And right now I have to scroll down and if I click deploy to AWS, you can see that it's in process. Up here, it installed the .NET tool. Um, you can actually go look at the logs. .NET tool install. This is the Amazon Lambda tools extension to the .NET CLI that allows you to easily deploy .NET Lambdas using the .NET CLI commands. Um, 
And right now it's actually doing this. So I can go look at the actual logs of what it's doing. It's, uh, it's run the command .NET Lambda deploy serverless. And this is a command that came with the tool right up above. So if I come in here and scroll down a ways, um, I can see all the outputs. These are outputs of the resources that were created from the CloudFormation template that was defined in the serverless.template file that we looked at earlier. And then down here, it actually outputs the API URL for the API gateway, which sits in front of the Lambda function, if you remember from uh, the architecture overview. So if I can actually go to that URL and hit enter, by default, the sample application that we use in this template, uh, if you don't specify a controller path, in other words, slash API controller name, it just outputs this welcome message for the root path. But if I do go to slash API slash values for the values controller, I get the values actually come back, the actual JSON that comes back from that controller. And, and that's really it. If I were to go back here um, and make a change to one of those files by going into the, the code, I can make the change directly in here, or like I said, in a remote environment or clone it and then make a change and push them back up. That would kick off a new run and my changes would then come out. So that's really how easy it is to set up a CI CD pipeline for your serverless.net, ASP.net um, applications hosted in Lambda using Code Catalyst. Uh, really quick, when you're done, you should go clean up your resources. So to do that, I can just delete the CloudFormation stack that it created. If you remember the name that I created was serverless ASP.NET demo stack, I can come into this stack, click delete, and that will delete all of the resources that got created in my AWS account. It doesn't actually delete this project. You can delete this project separately by going into the project settings. So with that, I want to flip back um, to the presentation for a second. Um, and I wanted to give you some links to a couple other resources that can help you get jump started with using Code Catalyst. The first one is a blog that I wrote earlier this year. Um, it covers the same process that I just went over for this video, deploying a serverless.net application. Uh, but instead of using the default x86-64 architecture, the blog post shows you how to do the same thing so that you're using the build and test on ARM64 compute using AWS Graviton processors. And then you deploy the deploy to a Lambda function that uses ARM64 architecture uh, to actually execute your application. The second blog um, is by a friend of mine here at AWS, and it covers uh, in a lot of detail how to deploy different types of ASP.NET core apps with Code Catalyst. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching this video, and please follow me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash in slash Kirk Davis.